Welcome to the Semtech Solutions video tutorial on coal ash testing. This tutorial will discuss the procedures and microscopy methods that we use to properly identify material that is attributed to coal, coal ash, or wood ash. I will end this video tutorial with appropriate contact information and a brief summary of Semtech Solutions. Upon receipt of a customer's sample, there are numerous steps involved to prepare and analyze the particulates before a final report is generated. I will go into greater detail regarding each individual step as we progress throughout this video. A list of the basic equipment we use to support these steps are a Blue M gravity drying oven, a Nikon stereo microscope, a Nikon polarizing light microscope, and an AMRAE 3300 field emission SEM with EDX. To properly prepare a sample for analysis, we typically run through a three-step process. First, we use a spatula to randomly scoop different parts of the sample and deposit them into an aluminum dish. Next, we remove any obvious organic matter from the dish with tweezers. For example, this may include sticks and leaves. Also at this point, if there are larger suspect particles contained in the original sample, we will add these to the dish as well. Last. The aluminum dish is placed into the oven and baked so that all moisture is removed from the sample. After the sample is dried, the aluminum dish is placed under the stereo microscope for particle binning. Preliminary inspection is then performed to detect and isolate any suspect particles with tweezers. Each suspect particle class is placed into its own separately labeled aluminum dish. As a side note, Fly ash and oil soot are usually too fine to visualize with the stereo microscope and require confirmation by PLM and SEM analysis. For each suspect particle class, one portion is set aside for SEM analysis and the other portion is for PLM analysis. For SEM preparation, each particle class is placed on top of an aluminum stub and labeled. The SEM stubs are then coated with graphite to improve image quality. For PLM preparation, the suspect particulates are ground into a fine powder. A subsample of the powder is placed on a glass microscope slide with a few drops of refractive index oil added. As a note, particulates such as coal tar and asphalt will dissolve in the oil to an orange-brown color, while the other particulate classifications do not dissolve in the aromatic oil. Up until this point, particle classification and associated binning has depended largely on the experience and skill of the analyst using a stereo microscope. In this slide, you will note features in which the PLM and SEM with EDX can provide, using coal fly ash as an example. The main question you may have at this point is, how can we be assured that these features are truly coal fly ash and not some other coal particle derivative? I will go into greater detail in subsequent slides, but in answer to the question, the analyst skills are confirmed against industry standard guides and references. The two main references we use for particle analysis with regards to the coal ash test are obtained from NIST and Macron. The procedural methods we use for the coal ash test are largely taken from a white paper titled Methods for Evaluating Applications of the Coal Ash and Wood Ash Exemption under the Massachusetts Contingency Plan. This white paper can be obtained from the lspa.org website. Here we show the various combustion byproducts that we will analyze for the coal ash test. Since we have highlighted coal fly ash in earlier slides, I will go into greater detail with regards to references and associated descriptors for each analytical technique, PLM, SEM, and EDX. For the sake of time and file size, I will also cover the next particulate in the list, coal ash so that the associated differences can be noted. For each particle classification, I have placed the feature descriptors under each analytical method on the left hand side and incorporated associated pictures on the right hand side. I will describe each analytical methods descriptor while zooming in on the picture so that the features can be seen more readily. To provide a brief background, coal fly ash is the byproduct of coal fired electric generating facilities and older coal-fired furnaces and stoves, which were once used for the heating of homes and businesses. 
The coal combustion process generates both fly ash and coal ash. Fly ash are the fine particles that get caught up in the exhaust and fall downwind of the exhaust stack. Today, fly ash particles are typically recovered through the use of electrostatic precipitators and or bag houses. PLM observation of coal fly ash shows clear to transparent glassy spheres, sometimes with opaque inclusions. No melting occurs in the immersion oil for coal fly ash. SEM imaging of coal fly ash exhibits symmetrical smooth round spheres, sometimes with spinal or dendritic features. Oftentimes, large fragmented spheres consist of numerous smaller spheres, as shown here. EDX analysis of coal fly ash portrays moderate to strong concentrations of aluminum, silicon, and oxygen, with lower amounts of potassium, calcium, titanium, and iron. Whereas coal fly ash is emitted out of the exhaust stack, coal ash is the material left behind in the bottom of the coal-fired process. Prior to environmental regulations, coal ash was typically scooped up and dumped in convenient locations. Today, most coal ash produced by electric generators is frequently disposed of in landfills, recycled into concrete, or employed in other types of fills. PLM observation of coal ash displays opaque gray-black particles that often show curved edges and some air pockets. Coal ash does not dissolve in the refractive index oil. SEM image analysis of coal ash reveals numerous pits, puck marks, or craters on the surface of the sample. The EDX spectrum of coal ash is similar to fly ash with an elevated silicon peak, moderate aluminum, oxygen, and iron, with minor amounts of magnesium, potassium, calcium, titanium, and sometimes heavy metals such as nickel and barium. Coal ash derived from low temperature or inefficient sources may still exhibit elevated amounts of carbon and sulfur, while at high temperatures, these elements will have been burnt off. The last step of the coal ash test is to generate a report based on the combination of analytical techniques and the analyst's experience. Reports can be saved on a wide variety of media and then sent out by equally diverse methods. With over 24 years of microscopy experience and over eight years producing results on coal ash samples, Dr. Ernie Doby is available to answer any questions you may have. Ernie can be reached at edoby at semtechsolutions.com or by phone at 978-663-9822, extension 232. As we come to the end of the presentation, I would like to spend a few minutes discussing Semtech Solutions. Semtech Solutions has been in business since 2000 and is focused on providing electron beam products and services. Our company is divided into four main areas, new and refurbished SEMs, SEM accessories, FE SEM analytical services, which the coal ash test falls under, and sales representation for companies wishing to promote their electron beam products in North America. Today, Semtech Solutions has over 100 SEMs under service contract within the U.S. Our customers range from universities to startups to Fortune 100 companies. To service this many SEMs requires a very experienced technical staff along with an adequate supply of spare parts. As shown on the map, Semtech Solutions maintains sales and service offices throughout the U.S. to meet our customers' needs. With respect to analytical services, the benefits of having trained engineers capable of refurbishing SEMs on site more than assures that our systems are always up and running and that they are well calibrated. This concludes our video on coal ash testing. I hope that this tutorial has been informative and that you will consider Semtech Solutions the next time you require analytical services. Thank you.